Hey y'all, John here. Welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be talking about my migration away from Ubiquiti and over to Cisco Meraki. Um, so I was doing a research project. Um, this started way before Thanksgiving where my main circuit at my apartment went down. I learned very quickly that they had five firewalls on their network. Yes, five, five. I don't know who set up that network, but basically I guess someone didn't know what VLANs are. And uh, we have a Microtech, WatchGuard, two PF Senses, and a UDM Pro um, running our network. I was thinking, hey, I need to figure out what's the best solution for this. So I started looking at the UDM Pro, seeing if that can really route 10 gigabit, but I don't really feel comfortable saying that, hey, turn off IDS and you'll get the 10 gig. I was running some iPerf tests and I, I quickly realized, yeah, I can't, I can't even run just a basic IDS and no blocking without that three and a half, lim three and a half gig limit. And then I was looking at Cisco Meraki since, again, the enterprise uses it. I want to see what's so good about it since I really haven't had a chance to kind of see it for myself. And then Fortigate, uh, Fort, Fortinet, not Fortigate, Fortigate is what the firewalls are called. But yeah, so it's, in my opinion, it was either the Unify uh, Next Generation Gateway, the, uh, the Enterprise Fortress Gateway, I mean, a MX450 or a 100F from Fortigate. So those are my three contenders. I didn't want to really include PFSense because again, I wanted them to have kind of access to this firewall to see, hey, this is what's going on. But yeah, I did all that planning. Um, unfortunately, they think the internet's up, but again, it's not my network. I have my own firewall, no big deal, but just wanted to compare those three vendors to see what was the best solution for a 346 unit uh, complex with a 10 gig fiber connection to see what works best and also from my own uh, learning experience. So just gonna get started and I'm gonna show you what um, kind of made me move to my network to Meraki and get rid of my UDM and my 16 PoE switch and AP. So I have two micro PCs, they're running uh, Proxmox, Ubuntu is installed as a guest, and then I have a NFS share mounted on one of the Ubuntu VMs that has a Plex data set on TrueNAS. So basically I have a my UDM, my 16 PoE, and an Aruba 1960 switch. The Aruba 1960 switch has four 10 gigabit ports on it. So um, two of them are SFP and the other two are RJ45, then you have 48. PoE capable ports. I know I'm not gonna be able to get 20 gigabit or like more than 10 gigabit on my MacBook Pro, but I wanted to have redundancy. So let's say I'm maxing out, I'm sending out data to my NAS. Just wanna make sure it doesn't slow out any Plex requests. So I set up LACP, turn off SMB multi-channel because I don't really need that. I can only max out one connection on the network, on that switch. So LACP will allow me to max out my one gig connection and then Plex will go over the second line. So that's what I set up. And then I was doing some testing where I would unplug the connection of the 10, uh, the 10 gigabit on my Mac and have it fail over to wireless. And then the connection would just drop. So I'm like, this is weird. So I'm like, DNS records are not working correctly for some reason. So I would type in the 10 to 100.1.2 address and it would go from, let's say 900 to, to all of a sudden it would drop to 10. So I'm like, why is this connection so slow? So I did the channel optimization, which I have running by default. Channels looked good, running 20 megahertz on the 2.4 gigahertz band, which I don't use. So I have band steering, sending over to the 40 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz band. I'm running um, 802.11ax, uh, Wi-Fi 6. WA2, WPA2 and encryption, nothing really crazy running on the network. So I'm like, everything looks fine on that end. I ordered the MX64, because again, I wanted to test out Meraki. Um, threw that in, this, I'm not, this is, Meraki's a subscription. Why would I use this? I, I just want to test it out to see what the UI looks like, see if I can configure a Meraki MX, just so I can have, I can be comfortable with it. Cause you can't just tell, you can't just tell someone like, Hey, yeah, let's buy some from Cisco, but you don't even know how to configure it. So bought a, a MX64, um, 40 bucks. I was ready to buy it, the, the license key for it. And then I realized, oh, if you make a new tenant, you can just add a new MX. As long as, it, as long as it's on a claim, you can just add it to your tenant and you get a 30 day free trial. So I did that uh, since Cisco didn't want to send me a free device to test. And at first it was a learning curve. I'm like, how do I get, how do I get to my VLANs? I don't know. I don't understand this. It took me at least like a good 20 minutes. And I'm like, okay, I'm getting comfortable with this. I'm seeing where everything is. Just by clicking through all the menus. And that's, that's how I learn. I tried watching YouTube videos about it, but it's not the same. So I configured the MX64, played around with it. Main thing I realized very quickly is the 250 meg throughput limit. So you can only send in and out on the way in 250 meg. I'm like, okay, whatever, no big deal. This play, this, it's a test device, just wanna play around with it. But then I was like, you know what? I wanna see if this 
U6 Lite is the problem. Because again, the U6 Lite is a 2x2 MIMO, 802.11ax, Wi-Fi 6 access point. I've been using that for the past two years. And you also have to keep in mind, before I switched over to Ubiquiti, I was on the Edge router, and before that I was on Netgear. So Ubiquiti is like the first like advanced network system I've used. So I set up the MX, had it take over my network. I didn't like the fact that I couldn't do PPSK, so that's something I use on my network. So I can give people different keys and it throws them on different VLANs. So I just set up a couple different VLANs, I just set up a LAN VLAN for myself and the NAS. Set up a network for that connected. Then I realized, why am I getting triple the throughput? Why am I going from 10 megabytes per second to 32, 33? Um, this doesn't seem right. Um, so then I said, you know what? I'm going to unrack my UDM and my USW 16 PoE switch and just run on the MX64. The 250 gig uh, limit, no big deal. I have like about one gig symmetrical on this network, but I would deal with 250 meg. That's still plenty fast. So I ran that for a few days and then I was like, you know what? I'm starting to understand how this thing is just, it just works. I don't really have to think about it. I don't have to think about channel optimization. It just moves, it does its own thing. I was getting some failures with DHCP at first on my Sonos, but other than that, I'm bulletproof, no weird issues. But again, I wanted to run the full speed of my network on my WAN. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna go from the MX64 I bought for $40. Um, I'm gonna move, upgrade to the MX68CW because I want the cellular failover and I still want to be able to use the built-in Wi-Fi without getting an MR access point. So I bought that. It's still the MX64 and MX68CW are both 802.11ac, um, two by two MIMO um, firewalls. Same speed, but I actually took some screenshots to show you guys the performance difference and the settings on the U6, just to show you that, no, this is not a fluke. I thought I was tripping. <laughs> like, this doesn't make sense. Why is a Wi-Fi 6 access point slower than a Wi-Fi 5 one? I'm like, the, this probably has a better chipset. It's, it's a, a couple times, um, more expensive, at least when it came out, but it's surprising. But then again, I'm starting to understand why businesses just buy Cisco. It just works. Something I will, I will say about used Cisco equipment. If you can buy a used MX68 for 200 bucks, let's say you can buy two of those instead of buying a brand new one for like 16, $1,700 and just have one as a warm, as a hot spare. So that's my plan. Um, I'll just pay the $300 a year. And I think that's very much worth it. Um, I'm not going to test out uh, Fortinet because I've been doing a lot of research. I know Reddit isn't the best, but I didn't realize the problems I had with Ubiquity until I started reading the forums about like wireless performance and reliability, stuff like that, scalability. And I think from now on, for myself, I'm going to be a solely Meraki network. I'm, I'm running the Aruba Incident 1960 series, which I mentioned before, but I might consider buying an MS switch. I'm thinking about getting one of, I think, uh, I think it's a 220-230 series, um, just getting it for the four 10 gigabit SFP ports, just so I can get the network topology list that I can't get since I'm running the Aruba. But yeah, um, it's been very interesting how just swapping out all that Ubiquiti gear has made my network a lot more performant. I would have never seen this coming if I didn't do this research for the apartment complex, so I'm very happy I did. I actually set up side-to-side -side VPN between the MX64 and the MX68. I'm behind a double NAT, multiple double nets but a big big double net i set up a um side to side vpn the meraki side, the meraki auto vpn between the mx64 and the mx68 and i can actually pass through my entire internet connection and it's like i don't have to really care that i'm behind a double net it just works i know you can do side to side vpn with side magic on ubiquity but it's not quite the same and it's also a lot slower so let's say for example my parents house they're using a file server over there i would only get maybe 10 megabits per second upload um, on this. I don't, it's probably gonna be a lot faster. I don't know how that is, but I think the relay servers on the Ubiquiti side were probably the reason why it was so slow and things like that. But it's quite exciting, the things I'm learning about Meraki. I wish I had tried, I wish I tried this before and I didn't just look at it as, oh, it's a subscription. Just look at it as your phone bill. If you don't pay your phone bill, you're not gonna have service. Same thing with your network. I mean, it's not necessarily ideal, but $300 a year is pennies. Like, I think that's worth it. One photo shoot can cover that for me easily. So I think that's well worth the investment. And uh, yeah, I hope this video had some good insight to show you about Meraki versus Ubiquiti. We, I feel like we all kind of knew that Meraki is so much better than Ubiquiti, but I didn't realize how much. If I do buy an MR, I'm sure my performance is going to be even more, but since it's just me, I'm just going to use the built-in Wi-Fi. I'm probably going to add the um, MS switch 
an MT sensor of some kind, maybe a button that, uh, that I can set up. But it's been very nice to be able to do uh, zero touch deployment. When I got this uh, MX68, all I did was duplicate my, my network, claim this on the dashboard, and I just plugged it in. And it downloaded all the policies straight from the Meraki cloud. And that was it. Didn't have to think about anything else. It just worked. So being able to do that, I can literally just program, I can program a device on the web, ship it to their house, and it just works. That is a blessing. <laughs> it's, it's underrated. I know on Ubiquity, I've set up a, a couple of different Unify Expresses and the UDMs, and it's like setting up on the phone app is very annoying because it's like sometimes it doesn't work. You have to hold the reset button and redo it. Meraki, just plug it in, works. So I've also ordered a Z3. Um, I'm going to be playing around with that on side to side. I might even get it as Z4. Those are a little bit more expensive, but they're not too bad in price. And MX is... The MXs are amazing. I don't think I'm ever gonna test out the FortiGates anymore. I don't really I see a need now since the Meraki works so well and it's cloud managed. I know on the on the Fortinet Forti side, the Forti, uh, Forti cloud is very, team's very messy, especially when you compare Forti cloud versus um, uh, Forti manager and the differences between the two. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, hopefully this made some sense. Um, I hope you enjoyed listening to me yap, but uh, stay tuned for the next video and we'll go from there.